Hi everyone, my name is Nicole Miyuki and this is Let's Make Art Matter for June. And we are doing a project, we're doing a couple of postcards for Taylin. And Taylin was nominated by a family friend and she is a little girl that is one and she passed away a month ago in May. Um, she had a, sorry, I'm trying to get choked up, she had a brain tumor. Um, and this is a photo, maybe you can do an overhead, this is a photo of her and her family. Um, and I was just, I was really touched by her story and we wanted to come together. So Let's Make Art Matter is where our community comes together and paints a postcard for a stranger that we don't even know, but to uplift them and to show them that other people are caring for them through this tremendously hard time that I can't even imagine. Um, so sp using your art to spread love and spread joy. So that's Taylor's story. Um, we are learning, I forgot to say this is for the lettering group, but if you're a part of the watercolor group and you're, or, or if you're just a friend of Taylin or you just want to um, show Taylin some love, please join us. We have um, in our quarterly subscription box, we have postcards that are blank on the front and then they have lines on the back so you can address it. Um, we'll email you, if you're a part of our group, we'll email you her address. And if not, please email us at hello at, ma hello at letsmakeart.com and we'll send you her address and you can address it on the back. Um, and if not, if you don't have either, if you don't have our subscription box, cut a piece of paper. Usually ours are four by six, but just a postcard size. Cut a piece of paper and come and make this with us. Um, so the project that we're doing is, so she had a hashtag that was called Taylin Strong and um, I wanted to do two different options. So I'm going to show you one is just having her name or the hashtag written out. And then another one is a really cool one. So I saw on, they have a Facebook page um, to celebrate her. It was actually before she passed away. I saw that there were just photos and it was more updating. Um, but I noticed on the logo or on the, the, the picture that they made for her, um, it had a little butterfly. So I thought that'd be cool to add in and so this one is similar, you might notice, from our monogram wreath project that we did, that Sarah and I did together. So I wanted to do a similar one but have butterflies around it. So we're going to do two different options today just to give you some options that you can go with. So what? There's so many different colors that you can use, so don't feel like you have to have, use these specific colors. I'm just going to go through a few of them. Um, I'm using the Tombow Dual Brush Pens. This is what we've been using. And you can use anything. You can use watercolors if you want. You can mix it up. But for the first one I just wanted to show, we'll go through her name first. So I was thinking about it, and since her name is pretty long, I was trying to figure out first, just for those of you who are trying to figure out layout and things, I was trying to figure out if I want to do it vertically or horizontally. And her name is pretty long. So I thought that maybe it'd be better horizontal. You can try both. Um, but I just wanted to talk you through what I was thinking about as I was designing this. And you can experiment. I want to see other people do different things. Maybe you experiment with, maybe I'll just show that. Maybe if you want tail and strong at an angle instead of straight, you can mix that up. We did this technique in the Bloom Where You're Planted project. Um, so you can play with that. So. If it's your first time with us, what's happening is that you're going to go thick on the down and then when you're going horizontal, you can make it thin, but so you can think to yourself, thin on the up, thick on the down. And so the other cool thing that I love, she has a Y in her name, so you can choose to either connect it or I like to break it up and kind of create a little home for her ends. I spelled her name wrong. Making another one. Man, did you notice that? I didn't. <laughs> well, this is, I'm glad, I will, I'm just going to talk through it. That happens to me often because I'm so focused on, well, this one I was talking at the same time. Her name has an L before the Y. But that's why this is paper. You can make more. T A 
So what's happening is I'm taking it stroke by stroke instead of drawing it really fast. So the Y, I'm going to take it up in two different strokes. So it's that stroke, which is one of the foundation strokes, and then a big curve like that. So what I was saying was the Y makes a home for her ends and her name. So I'm following this line that I did right here, so it has that angled look. And then, so this color was the turquoise 443. And then I decided to do it in a strong color in purple. And so when I'm looking at layout, what happens is that because the Y descends into the next line, you can decide, do you want to do strong right here? Or do you want to make the S really big and the other letters smaller to fit under here? So those are different things that when you're playing with layout, with whatever word that you do, maybe it's a different name or a different quote, or you write happy birthday, or if you want to make a different card, um, you kind of have to see what letters you're working with because there's no formula. Um, it's more just seeing what you have and then working around it and making it work. So I'm going to decide that because of this, maybe I'll draw a butterfly right here just to mix it up. So I'm going to write strong. Let's see, maybe I'll do this one in cursive since you can see that I did this one in a block print. So I'm going to do this one in cursive. So a capital S is an interesting loop. Um, oops, so it looks a little bit different. Um, but that's a capital S. So I'm going to follow my lines. So, and it's cool, and I didn't think about this before, but now that I realize that I have a G at the bottom, or G at the end, so it's going to, the bottom of a G is similar to the Y, so it, it descends. So I have all this space right here, so I'm going to choose to fill that with the second half of my G. and loop it like that. And then, hmm, what I'm thinking about is my T, I didn't cross my T, and I would love to curl it. Well, I'll just do it right there. That works. Um, the strong looks musical. That's because what, doesn't that look like a musical note kind of? Yeah. It looks like Keenan's a musician. Wow. <laughs> um, so once you have your lettering down, there's a few different things. Uh, we have the magic magic tutorial that goes over different blending techniques. So maybe you experiment with that. Um, one of, if you can either do that or actually I'll just show. So what, what I did was I don't have with me a darker blue, but you can also just add you want to add a little bit to the bottom. So I'm just adding over my lines just a little bit of, like little blades of grass at the bottom. But then you can also, oh, I forgot her hashtag. Um, another way is that you can create emphasis is by adding a shadow. So what's happening, um, there's two different ways that you can do shadow or that we've been learning this quarter is this one where I'm just adding a line, a thin line with a little bit of space between, or this one where it goes directly next to the other color. So when you're thinking about shadows, just start and decide with a light source. So mine's coming from the right side and it's hitting my letters and then it's casting a shadow on the left side. So I'm just gonna add a little line. And so I like to use, so you'll notice your Tomadua brush pens have two different sizes. I like to use sometimes this side for when adding a shadow or this type of shadow because it's such a thin line. So this is just a felt tip pen. So on the left side, I'm just gonna add little lines like that. And then, oh, and then with strong, what you can do, so this is Peacock Blue 533. And I'm going to just overlap a little bit because you won't see it as much, and add the line directly so there's no white space in between. And so you can dictate how big your shadow is. Maybe it's really big or it's just a thin line like that, and there's probably a shadow here. 
like that. So let me erase the lines a little bit. Then once you have your lettering done, we're going to learn how to add little butterflies. So with this one, I decided to also go with the blending technique. So butterflies, I know if drawing isn't your thing, it's totally okay. These are really simple, just shapes. So what you're going to do is you're going to create kind of like, there's two different types of butter or ways you can do it, but I like to think of it as kind of an almond type of shape or a leaf if you're, if you're used to doing leaves. Um, so for this one, I'm going to do this one where it's like this, where it's front facing. So you see both wings. So what you're doing is I'm doing it into my lighter color first because I'm going to add a darker color over it. Do you like butterflies, Keenan? I do like butterflies. I love butterflies. Okay. In, in LA, they had a crazy monarch um, <laughs> overload of them, of the monarch butterflies. Were they migrating? Yeah. Cool. Did you know that? Yeah, they, they migrate every year. It was a lot. You know what's interesting? About, it was in California. What's interesting about monarch butterflies? Yeah, do you have a fun fact? I do, actually. These aren't monarch butterflies. Well, yeah. Well, these could monarch, aren't they? They could be, sure. Yeah. Monarch butterflies look different, but I know about monarch butterflies a little bit. Yeah. So they migrate in their lifetime one time. In their lifetime? Mm -hmm. So they migrate once, and then they have their offspring, however that works. Yeah. And that offspring naturally migrates back the other direction. Whoa. Isn't that crazy? Fun fact. Thanks yeah. for educating yeah. us. Yeah. One time. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay. Well, these are purple. <laughs> I don't know if purple butterflies exist. They probably do. Yeah, there's blue butterflies. Yeah. They have to. Anyways, so you actually, I was doing it while Keenan was talking. So I wasn't thinking, this is kind of like a teardrop type of shape. So just make kind of either an oval type of shape or you can make it more pointed. So if you think about it, the top wings are usually a little bit bigger than the bottom wings. You don't need to be so precise at them, um, but what you can do is you can do that and then you can add, maybe these are almond, more almond shape at the bottom. So leave a little bit of room and then you're gonna add the body so it has a head. These are super simple. This is not realistic at all. But, and then you add kind of like a long skinny almond shape and then add the little antennas at top. But what's happening is that I'm going to add some details to the, sh to the um, wings. So what you can do is add, still using my same purple. And then you can go, this is imperial purple. Oh, sorry, this is peacock blue. This is imperial purple, 636. And so I'm going to, to create some depth is I'm using a darker color and I'm just gonna draw kind of similar blades of grass on the inside coming out like that. I'm just gonna leave it for the top ones. And then I'm gonna go back over with my original color and I'm gonna blend them. So if you do a close up, you can see that it creates this lighter purple color, but it's still darker than the other one and it's just blending. So I love these pens. These pens are water-based. Maybe I'll just add a little depth with, yeah, those wings are funny. Um, Let's add a little color. So you can play around how much um, of a variance you want to add. So that's the front facing butterfly. Then the side facing one is, this is when I like to use the almond shaped, is that I'm gonna do, so there, if you're looking at the side of them, is, so you're gonna do two big ones like that, so a top one kind of angled and the bottom one, and then you can add, depends. So if you think about, depends on what angle you're looking at the butterfly. So it doesn't have to be exact, is you just want it to be behind. So then I'm gonna add my body after. Do the same thing, grab your darker color, 
And so what I'm doing is I'm showing, like I said, blades of grass with a little bit of space between and then blending that back in. <coughs> Ooh. And then, so these are like the almond shaped ones. <clears throat> then you can add, so this body is, I'm gonna curve it a little bit. Ooh, and it's cool. I don't know if you can see that, but my, um, this peacock blue color still had a little bit of purple. Um, oh, and then you can add, maybe the wings are flapping. You can add some details. So you can fill that in however you want um, and keep going with that. Also, I realized on this one what I did was, so this one has three colors. So I added, I just added some blue. Maybe right there. So you can layer however much you want. Um, and then also you don't, ha I didn't have to, but if you want, you also, um, if you have a, this is the N00, the um, colorless blender. So you'll notice, let's see if it still has. Yeah, even though it's tinted pink, because I use this on another project, you can't see it. Um, but if you want, you can also use this to blend even more. It's not necessary if you don't have this, but this is why you have this tool is that you can continue with that. So maybe you write the, her hashtag for her. I'll leave these all here. But then the other one I just wanted to show is, I know this looks a little bit more complicated, but it is going to be simple with these few steps. So one, draw an oval pretty lightly in pencil. So this is your guideline. Or you can draw a circle, but because this is a vertical card, I'm gonna make it more horizontal. Then what I want you to do, maybe it doesn't mean it's too dark. So I'm just lightly erasing so that you don't see a little bit more of my pencil lines. Okay, am I an okay spot? Yes, you are. Okay. So I have a few colors here. What did I use here? So I have coral, this one chrome orange? Yeah. Number is it? 993. Yep. Chrome orange. 933. That's gold orange? No, gold That's is gold. the other one. This is is this just orange? 933, I think it's just orange then. Okay. Sorry, we have so many nines and threes. Um, 533 three is peacock blue. I guess I should show up for this way. Just if you're curious. What I think is when I'm thinking of different colors is you're kind of thinking of and experimenting with what feels harmonious. So for me, these felt like they were all in a similar family. Um, the purple's a little bit brighter, um, but I was, I was debating on adding a pop of blue. I just kept the blue here. So this is why this feels cohesive and harmonious. So I'm just gonna use a mix of these colors. Um, so what you can do is if you wanna start with the same color since you're comfortable with that, is from this is just draw, so these can be super loose. Don't feel like you have to, those ones I was a little bit more meticulous about it. But just draw almond shapes. Maybe add some depth to it, or the different one. So draw some almond shapes. And so what's happening is you'll notice, instead of me using, coming from the top of this brush pen and just using the tip of it, I'm actually coming a little bit more at an angle, so I'm using more of the belly of it. Personal preference, I just wanna show you that that's an option. Um, so what you're doing is just add some color to some spots on your wreath. Again, they don't need to be perfect. Where's another purple one? So you can decide, you have the two different types. You have the front facing one and the side facing one. So there's some purple. Then I did some coral. So just add four different wings. And then if you're doing a side one, do a side one here. So pretty loose. Then 
and also vary up the sizes because that will help. So instead of having like, one really big one and then all the, well, you can't actually, maybe that's the mama one. Yeah. Oh, that would be pretty. That would be. Have one really big one and all the little ones around it. Um, but I was going to say, if you have something that's, it might look bottom heavy, if you have a bunch of bigger ones at the bottom and then maybe smaller ones at the top, if you'd like it to be more of a harmonious type of wreath and so your eye kind of moves around it, vary up the sizes. So you have some small ones, you have some big ones. Um, and then I also did a few just little yellow ones. Those are like the monarch ones. Well, if I had orange. Um, okay, so then that's the first step is just add your base layer of all your different ones. Then what you do is the same thing where we did where on the bigger, bigger leaves, on the bigger wings, um, adding the shadow. So maybe a little bit here. So I'm just, I'm still using this side and I'm just kind of drawing my little blades of grass. So it's helpful to use, well actually, you don't have to use a darker color, but that's what will help you it have create the, um, the ombre look. And then I'm going back in with my original color. And so then you can play with, do I make these a lot bigger? Oh, I just love how these mix. So I'm just overlapping. And the other thing is I'm not sitting here pressing really hard like that. I'm kind of just grazing. And so think about it like it's on the surface and you're just kind of pushing the ink around. Or, yes. Would you say that? Gliding? You're wisping. Rather than... Can you add a sound effect? <laughs> That's all I can. That was I a pop. I wouldn't say that goes with <laughs> gliding at all. Like whoosh. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. You're the voiceover. Like that was like a gust of wind. Like the mon the butterflies whooshing by you. That would take a lot of butterflies. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, probably. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm blending that all in, and then. So for, oh, on the pink ones, I just use a little bit of orange. So this one, if you don't want as much of a uh, difference. So again, it's cool because I'm just doing it really quickly, really lightly. Um, and then the yellow ones, I think I just left. Maybe you can add, if you want, maybe you can add some orange to the yellow ones as well. Maybe I'll do that. Okay. So super simple. And then the final step of the wreath part is, this is the Tombow Fudenosuke. <coughs> and this is a smaller brush pen. So if you look at the sizing, they're very different. So we use the Tombow Fudenosuke in our journal project because that was a little bit smaller of a project. So these are really great pens um, that I love too. They're just smaller, so you can't get as big of a project, but they're perfect. So what happens if you look at this is I'm adding, instead of drawing, so you can 100% do your butterflies like this, or if you want to create some um, more of an illustrated type of look, we're just going to overlap with our black. And when you're doing this, you don't, the beautiful thing is you don't have to feel like you have to follow your lines exactly. So it's kind of cool if it has this look of an, a little bit overlap, or, or sorry, some white space. Oh, I need to add my body. So add your body. Um, I'll start from this, keep going. It's crazy how drastic of a change those have when you do that. Yeah, because they pop more? Yeah. Yeah, because right now they just look like because yeah, the one on the left looks really detailed. And then as yeah. goes, it looks more detailed. Um, so also what I'm thinking about is when I'm doing this is when you're using this brush pencil, you'll notice is if you were writing her name, 
you can you'll notice thin and thin thick lines. So that's created by my pressure. So what's happening is when I'm doing these strokes, do it on this bigger one, is you'll notice. So I'm going to use the tip, and then I'm going to push, and then lift up. So you can create the, some depth and shadow with just this guy and figuring out adding more pressure. So there's no rhyme or reason as far as when you add it. Um, for these ones, since it's more, this is just all the butterflies are migrating. Oh, Once of a lifetime. <laughs> for Talon, that's what's happening. I love that. Okay, sorry, got a little distracted. So adding your also, well, so on some of them, maybe, so you'll notice that there's some open spaces. I'm gonna fill those in with smaller ones that don't have black on them. You can also use a different color if you have a different color. But, so even on that one, if you see, I definitely didn't even follow my lines exactly. And I also realize I'm not talking about what, so you can play with the almond shape. And what's also I like to play with is if I come up and then you come down, so kind of creating a, what shape would you say that is? A uh, wing shape. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, oh, they either look like birds or lips. That looks like a lip. Yeah, that does. Um, but you're creating a curve or a wave. So this one has just a little wave to it. Is this thing a recurve bow? Archery? Oh, yeah. I was thinking of a girl's bow. Hair bow. I knew you would have said archery. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for getting me. Um, yes, it totally does. So, and then you can make them all different sizes. So hopefully, even if you don't like drawing, I think you can draw almond shapes. And like I said, this is from our wreath monog or our monogram wreath project that Sarah and I did together that ooh, I believe was a couple weeks ago. Um, so you can see we're doing wreaths or we're doing leaves in that one. So if you want to learn more about that too. Okay, so add a few more. So for the body, sometimes I just do a line. Sometimes I make it with a little bit of space in between. Totally up to you. So then I want to fill in a little bit of my space because I didn't do all of them. So maybe I'm going to use just a little lighter yellow. Maybe just add some other ones here. Or maybe you add leaves or other lines. And you can also do is I always just like to add little dots berries. It, it just feels sweeter. Could be pixie dust floating. Oh, that they're leaving behind. Yeah. There we go. Um, that's kind of, well, it's like the mom and the dad. Kind of. <laughs> I did too, and that one's a little bit bigger too. Um, okay, so once you have your wreath done, I should have prefaced. If you, some people like to do their lettering or the inside first, some people like to do the outside first. No rule. You can choose which one you want to do first. Um, I just ended up doing the wreath, or the, yeah, the wreath first. So for her T, so I did a T for Taylor. Maybe you can also turn your card this way. Maybe draw the butterflies. Well, it doesn't matter. But I was going to say, if you want to do it horizontal, you can also add her name in the middle this way, and that would look really pretty too. Um, but I'm just going to show you how I did the T. So because I, this is such, I wanted to have a strong T for her. I'm going to use, so what you might be comfortable or used to is if you're gripping really tight like that, your T, even though I'm pressing really hard, that's the bit thickest I can get it. Whereas if I come back a little bit more and I angle my hand a little bit more, I can use more of the belly of the brush and get a lot thicker of a stroke. So I don't letter like that. So if it's hard for me to letter like that, so that's if this is how you normally letter and you're getting frustrated, maybe that's your tip is to grip closer. 
but for this one because i'm just trying to get the thickest stroke possible and i'm not thinking about the letters all i i can it's okay for me and i feel comfortable if i if i come up a little bit higher that would you say that yeah farther away from the tip um yes. and, <laughs> um and coming more at an angle so you can get more of the surface of the the brush pen so i'm going to do that so i'm going to come up a little bit higher so i'm just going to draw a really thick t you have a shallow approach with the pen this one yeah the way where you hold it instead of this like a real vertical hold you're having a shallow hold yeah that makes sense there we go that makes sense to me Sweet. um thanks Ken. Uh, so you can either do that or what I did was I realized I actually really like this size. I'm not going to play with it, but for this one, when I originally did it, which is why I'm teaching you guys is when I originally did it, I think I had my regular grip and I just didn't get as thick of a T. So I had to add more thickness just by adding more strokes. So it kind of, it's cool. If you look really closely, it has, um, because this is, these pens are water-based is so you can overlap and just create a darker color. So you might have more transparency than you're used to with, if you use a, a different type of pen, but I actually like that. And I love how, because I press so hard right here, it has more saturation <coughs> in the pen. So I'm going to add her T. I think I want to, let's see, do I want it curved? I like it curved. And then if you want, you can add a shadow as well. Hmm. Maybe, I don't know. I think I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna send both of them to her. But I like, I wanted to keep this one like this, but I wanna show you how, hmm. I'm just gonna add a line right here. So it's a little bit softer and then let the butterflies fly around it. They, so it, this is cool to show that they have two different looks and you can notice. So I went over this one. This is just, well, ignore that pur dark purple part, but this is just the same color with multiple layers. Whereas this is this color with just one layer. And then I, for this one, added a little bit of purple. Actually, I should show you guys just in case you want to do that is what I did was I added a really thin line of purple on the left side because I was deciding that my light source is from the right and then I went back over and I used my light original color and I so I'm overlapping again I'm not put <laughs> I don't know what the noise is for the pushing I'm not pushing super hard and being rough on it because you will notice that if you do it too many times and if you do it really rough, it'll start to break the paper. So you're just gonna rub into the paper. So again, just glide and whoosh over it. Whoosh. That's way better than me. Do it like Keenan. And then, so I'm just gonna blend it. So it has this slightly, oh, actually that does look better. So then maybe, you add some, I'm not gonna do it too dark, but. There we go. Okay. Nice. That's it. This is the, the sweet photo of her family. Um, that was really cool. There's the, so hopefully you saw there's just those little techniques to make really cool butterflies. There's different shading techniques. Um, thank you so much for being here and being a part of this with us. Like I said in the beginning, this is Let's Make Art Matter for June for Taylin. And she was a sweet little girl who was one and passed away last month. Um, so we're doing this to honor her and what her family went through. I guess she was diagnosed with her brain tumor when she was five months old and she's been fighting. So, um, lost my train of thought because I was thinking about her. If you need her address, uh, email us at hello at, hello at letsmakeart.com and we'll send that to you for you to send this out. This is a special, really small part of our company that we just do. Um, we all believe in just spreading, spreading support for those, even if we don't know them and who may, yeah, be going through something hard. So anyways, thanks so much for being with us and I'll see you guys later.